located on the web at MBUSA.com. Bob Weltnick of South Alabama, Rick Pitino of Louisville, Bob Carpenter, Larry Conley at Freedom Hall. It must, for some folks in Lexington, be almost unthinkable. For folks here in Louisville, Larry, might be unbelievable. Well, they refer to this place as the Red Planet. And trust me, everything in here tonight is red. Cardinals are ready to start their season with a brand new coach. And I think everybody in America is waiting to find out what kind of club they're going to have. The Pitino impact has already been felt with three very good freshmen who've decided to sign here and stay at home there will be more to follow without a doubt patino eight great years at kentucky and his lineup features some veteran guys but there's a newcomer carlos hurt a 6-1 freshman out of moore high school here in louisville he was a high school all-american and the first mcdonald's all-american since 93 to sign with the ufl Meanwhile, the South Alabama club out of the Sun Belt, they've been the best defensive club in that league the last four years. Bob Weltnick's Jaguars win the opening tap. Really only two experienced guys. One of them, Demetrius Williams, handling the basketball out front. You'll see a lot of him tonight. A very good player. They're a motion team on defense. They play lots of man-to-man, -man, like Louisville will on the defensive end. Demetrius Williams, their best perimeter player, kicks it off for Marcus Ivey. There's a rejection. The ball over the end line with 12 on the shot clock. Ivy tried to get one off as quickly as he could. Pretty good defensive work on the other end. Oh, what a block that was coming up by Eric Brown. And guess what? Last year, Eric Brown was a one-dimensional offensive player. Yeah, they His coach has told him, you better play D, buddy. Yeah, they're going to do a little more than that. Bad pass that time to the freshman. Keep an eye on this young man, Justin White, who just handled the ball for South Alabama. Bob Weltley at the shoot-around today. Felt like he probably is going to be the guy who can build his club around for the future. Awfully good-looking uh, Midwesterner going to South Alabama to play. Western Kentucky out of the Sun Belt, winning at Kentucky earlier. Can South Alabama do it here in Louisville? South Handling the basketball, Luke Whitehead. South Alabama in a straight man-to-man -man defense. Both of these coaches love to play man-to-man. -man. Eric Brown can't knock it down. Miles kept it alive. Reese Gaines, the outstanding junior guard, keeps it alive. And a fresh 35 of the shot clock for the Cards. Into the corner, Whitehead. Contact there by Henry Williams for the foul. Good attempt to crush it that time by Henry Williams in the corner. He actually had Whitehead in a pretty good position, but he pushed him, allowing Louisville to get the ball back. Cardinals worked very hard yesterday in practice on getting up and down the floor. Patino's clubs, known for their full court pressing, also their frenetic pace. Reese Gaines receives it. He'll try. Looking to pull up. Can't. Kicking for Eric Brown. He's got some offensive game, and Eric Brown goes right at the Jaguars to draw the foul. There are two guys on this club in Louisville that really come in with more experience than anybody else as far as playing time. One of them is Eric Brown, a junior out of Lexington. Of course, the other one is Reese Gaines, who I think last year, Bob, and you may agree with me, but I thought he was one of the better offensive players we saw in Conference USA. 14 a game as a sophomore with 98 assists. Eric Brown became eligible in December. He went out and averaged 10 points per game. And Denny Crum gave him 25 minutes a game at that time. He grew up in a hurry. Played at Moorhead State a couple of years ago. He was a former Ohio Valley Conference Freshman of the Year. Eric Brown, a Lexington kid out of Bryan Station High School. Can't roll in the second one. The rebound, Justin White at 6'9". Brown actually a transfer from Moorhead State. Played with Kyle Macy for one year up there, former Kentucky guard. Turnover, running, but too far ahead with the pass. Taken away by Jamaicus Ricks of South Alabama. Rick is very quick getting up the floor that time to get the ball back. 5'10", 155 junior, his entry for White. Whitehead takes it away for Louisville. Three turnovers already. Hurt to the wing. Eric Brown on the drive. Backdoor rebound, the banker for Luke Whitehead. And look for this sophomore to really come on this year. Yeah, play a little bit of racket right now, particularly on South Alabama's end. They go for the home run pass, and this is something they cannot do. Eric Brown driving, hanging, scoring! That's what you're going to see a Patino team do. They love to get the ball off of the press, turn it around, and get baskets off of it. It'll stay with the Jaguars. The Louisville defense gets the crowd into it early here, two minutes and nine seconds in. And already they've got several thousand on their feet applauding. We can't panic is what South Alabama kept saying about tonight's game. Well, that last possession, they got way too impatient. So 
four turnovers by the visitors already. Going to their half-court offense. One of the things, Bob, that happens in November is you don't have a great deal of time to get ready. You, know, you start practice officially October the 15th. Some of these things that you work on during the year, you get better at. But in November, it's very difficult to work against a pressing team. Demetrius Williams on the drive and a reach-in foul on Louisville's Reese Gaines. Bob Weltlick, not a winning career record, but he's one of the most respected men in the business. Larry, he has coached at Florida International, Texas, Ole Miss of the SEC. He is a great teacher of the game. Indeed. In fact, these guys, I think, are two of the better coaches in college. Oh, what a pass! Miles on the receiving end from the freshman hurt, and he got fouled, thus could not finish. Always remember when you're a point guard that when guys work hard to get open or they fill lanes, reward them. Get them the ball. Good run out that time down inside by Ellis Miles, and he was rewarded by the pass by Hurt. Good-looking freshman. The last time Louisville signed a McDonald's All-American out of high school, Jason Osborne in 1993. So Rick Pitino has had an immediate recruiting impact on this program. Brandon Bender, a 6'9 freshman, stayed home from Ballard High School. And Larry O'Bannon, a 6'4 freshman forward from Mayo High School here in Louisville. And folks around here know all about that school. Gentleman by the name of Daryl Griffin came out of there. Was substitution in his own. Oh, one of the doctors of dunk. Adam Salo will check in for South Alabama because Henry Williams just got his second foul. Although Williams remains in the game. And Miles rolls it around and Ellis the sophomore from Compton California has his first basket transition for Jamaica's Ricks underneath unable to handle it Henry Williams and right now South Alabama not even getting shots they've had one field goal attempt and six turnovers not a good start Bob Wellick knows that they're a little thin. They lost a lot of quality players. They lost four starters, or three starters and four seniors from last year's club. Great backdoor look, Reese Gaines. Bob Weltnick wants a timeout. South Alabama's got to stop it. They're down eight in the first two minutes and 55 seconds. Cardinals pitching a shutout right now and a patented Patino type approach to the game, making sure you've got the press on, going after the weakest link. Right now, the weakest link for South Alabama is handling the basketball. Nice roll to the basket that time by Ellis Miles. Rick Pitino has coached all over the place at Boston U, Providence, and Kentucky. We asked him to compare coming here to some of those other programs. When you replace a Denny Crum, who is maybe one of the premier strategists in the game, and they're losing, you know it's not his strategy. You realize that the talent level is down. This is not typical Louisville talent, nor is it Providence talent, nor is it Kentucky talent. Uh, BU is but probably the same. So there's a reason the talent level dips, recruiting dips, and now it's time to build it back up, back up again. A teacher, a motivator, and a rebuilder, Rick Pitino. Jamaica's Ricks. They've had one shot in their first six possessions, and most of them have been resulting in turnovers. Strong drive from the right side, and I think Marcus Ivey stepped on the end line. He did. Tom O'Neill with the whistle. Great officiating crew tonight. Tom O'Neill, the lead official, with Scott Thornley and John Clockerty. These guys get more air time than we do. They work more games than we do. <laughs> Carlos Hurt kicks it to the wing. Reese Gaines. That's a three. Five for him. Uh, he's such a good player. And it's not just on the offensive end. Rick Pitino, very complimentary of his co-captain. He says he can handle it, but he also is the captain because he works so hard on defense. All 11 of Louisville's points off turnovers. Reese Gaines with a second foul at the other end. Watch Hurt right here with the basketball, giving up underneath and the kick out to the corner to Gaines. I tell you, that's Gaines Burgers right there, all the way to the bottom of the net. <laughs> Larry Thompson checks in for South Alabama, one of their backup guards, a three-point guy. And they may need some perimeter scoring right now. There's number 34 for the Louisville Cardinals. And that's Larry O'Bannon. Another one of those good freshmen. <laughs> Another turnover by South Alabama. Wow. Eight of them already, and all of Louisville's points off the turnovers. My goodness, way out there hurt. 
Eric Brown with the little jump hook. And the tie-up. Larry Thompson tied up with Ellis Miles at 6'8". This is not a preseason game, so no jump balls now. Exactly what I was going to say. Uh, in the games that you've been watching that are in tournaments, uh, they've, uh, they have these experimental rules where they're using the jump shot or the jump ball, but not tonight. Oh, Bannon almost got his first collegiate assist and a very good straight-ahead pass to Ellis Miles. You know, one of the things you've got to do if you're South Alabama, obviously you've come in here with a very inexperienced club. You're very young. You're playing before a crowd of approximately 18-5. You've got to be able to gather yourself and just start playing basketball. They have not been able to do that. We've played over four minutes now. And South Alabama looks like they just left their whole game back home in Mobile. they got to get Henry Williams out of the game now. That's his third foul. He's replaced by Iman Hunter, a 6'5 sophomore who was a walk-on last year. And Henry Williams, arguably their best down-low player, he's going to be sitting for quite a while. Ellis Miles with the free throw. 12 nothing. Cardinals. Four minutes and four seconds in. Some looks back. All night long, Patino's 96 cats. The Wildcats in eight years, three Final Fours, including a championship year. They had been to their first Final Four in 93. In 96, they would go back again. Yeah, take a look. Watch Tony Dell get this basket right in front of the Kentucky bench. That was against Syracuse when they won their national championship. What a great win it was, and kind of brought the program back to where it was. That we don't build it up right from the first year he got there. At the Meadowlands in the Jersey area, that happened. And as we come back, nine turnovers by the visiting Jaguars of South Alabama and the Patino resume at Kentucky. Eight great years. And no coach in America took advantage of the three-point line better than Rick Patino. More on that as the night goes on. Hurt, dribble penetration, rattles in his first collegiate field goal. Everybody getting involved, and Louisville leads 14 to nothing. South Alabama struggling even getting the ball up the court. Open jumper. Air ball from Larry Thompson. Jaguars feeling real uncomfortable right now. Entry pass, Whitehead. Good takeaway there. And then the ball lost by Thompson. Another turnover. Ten of them in five minutes. Yeah, so far, Louisville pitching a good shutout. High pick and roll by Miles to the corner, it goes. Three ball, down it goes. Eric Brown, a half dozen for him. He had a couple of 20-point games in conference play last year against Charlotte and DePaul. And it looks like a Carlos Hurt foul in the backcourt. Now it's going to be Luke Whitehead with his first. Yeah, Whitehead grabbed him around the uh, arm before he could get up the floor with it. South Alabama struggling to get their offense even into motion. They can't get the ball up the court to get set. Bryant Northern checks in for the Cardinals. A 6-1 sophomore, walk-on, who's one of the strongest players in Conference USA. He could bench press Larry Conley and me together. That's all of about 200 pounds between the two of us. <laughs> Left wing, Marcus Ivey, looking to penetrate. Perfect defense by the Cardinals so far. You want to say it again? Another turnover. Mm. 11 of them in five and a half minutes. Well, that number, those two numbers, pretty much tell the story here. Miles up high, leaves it off for O'Bannon. Northern swinging for Simon Nadenoff, who just checked in. He throws up an air ball, sophomore from Bulgaria, who's a good spot-up shooter. But some opening night jitters for some of these kids. Thompson on top for Marcus Ivey. Nice screen, good switch that time by Whitehead. Whitehead a foul as he shuffles his feet. Ellis Miles grabs him and says, buddy, play with your feet, not your hands. And that'll be number two on Luke. Yeah, Luke Whitehead kind of walked over to the official to say something, and immediately Ellis Miles grabbed him and said, keep quiet. 
Hey, the one thing I've heard about here since we've been at the city of Louisville is all this body fat that everybody's loosening off of this team, including Ellis Miles. He's lost 30 pounds, and his body fat's gone from 18% to 9%. i got to ask him how he did that. Their freshman, Brandon Bender, went from 268 to 235. His body fat down to 10% from 20. And we're not even talking about Scott Davenport yet, one of their assistants. There's a tie-up. Good, hard defensive work by Bryant Northern. Our buddy Scott Davenport was on Denny Crum's staff. He stays here as an administrative assistant, and uh, he's lost 63 pounds. He better stop before he disappears on us. But Rick Pitino tells guys, you want to play for me, you want to be on my staff, you got to be able to move around. Out on top, Jamaica's Ricks for South Alabama. They're picked to win their division in the Sun Belt this year. Nice little jumper, wouldn't go. Left side, a good look for Adam Salo. And here's Northern. Or the freshman, Larry O'Bannon. Miles backing in, taking a grab there from Iman Hunter. Looks like Hunter with a push off before Miles could get established in that post position to make a move. Well, one of the things they did at Louisville when uh, Rick Pitino came in was establish uh, a conditioning program, and they really have stayed with it. O'Bannon the miss, and Simon Nadenoff pushing off. There's Scott Davenport over on the left. Vince Taylor, who was on Denny's staff here. Mick Cronin, who was Bob Huggins' top assistant. And there are other guys, an interesting young coach. Kevin Willard in his first year. Four years with Rick at the Celtics. And he's a former Pitt Panther. And, of course, everybody knows his father, Ralph Willard, an outstanding collegiate coach. Another turnover by South Alabama. I'll let you call that one. <laughs> Thank you. Seven minutes in. 17 nothing Louisville. This sounds like one of their football scores. They got a pretty good football team that won Conference USA. Joseph Sima, who just checked in. First basket of the night and the season. He's a guy who had a hard time scoring last year at three points a game. That was Louisville's big problem. They could get points from Marcus Maven on the perimeter, but sometimes their inside game could not score at all. They went 12 and 19 last year. Miles the tip away. The Cardinals did play better in Conference USA play. They managed to be a 500 club at 8 and 8. Pretty good slap away that time by Miles, dunking it out of bounds. South Alabama still trying to find their first basket. Marcus Ivey back. Rick Patino. 352 wins in 15 previous years. Did well at Boston, did better at Providence, and even better at Kentucky. And each one of those programs he took over, they had losing years the prior year. And they brought him back. Putting the ball on the floor, Jamaica's Ricks, and drawing the foul on Bryant Northern. Now there's the previous season record, and another one here in Louisville. As the cards, as mentioned, went 12-19 last year. By the way, South Alabama beat Louisville last season. The Jaguars of Bob Weltlich beat Marquette on the road in the NIT. They won at Auburn and beat Louisville as part of their 22-win season. But they lost Virgil Stanisview and Ravante Dantzler, a pair of all Sunbelt players, as Larry mentioned earlier. They need a basket. Just get on the board, guys. Out on top for Adam Salo. The jumper. There's a three. A little mock applause in here from the crowd. For a minute, I thought Kurt Schilling was in the bin building. We had a <laughs> shot. Oh, oh, Randy Johnson. <laughs> 19 to 3. Eight minutes in. There's a hacking foul way away from the basket on Marcus Ivey. That'll be his second. We've got the under 12-minute timeout. A welcome reprieve for the Jaguars from Mobile, Alabama. They finally got a basket. John Calipari, the Memphis coach, is going to join us tonight. That's coming up.
Thank you, Pam Ward. And the uh, Tigers, of course, picked to win Conference USA this year atop the National Division. Cincinnati atop the American. From Memphis, John Calipari joins us. And, John, congratulations on your win today. We're looking at what Rick Pitino did his last two stops. And, of course, you with UMass and the New Jersey Nets. Tell us about your ball club and everybody around the country is hearing about young Mr. Wagner. Greatest thing I can tell you about DeJuan Wagner, it's really nice when your your player, you're one of your best players, or if not your best player, is a nice guy. And this young man is, you know, he's passing the ball, he is scoring when we need him to, but he's just trying and getting in better shape. So uh, I think we're going to be okay. Kelly Wise, uh, Chris Massey, uh, Earl Barron, Scooter McFadden, we're, we're going to be okay. John, this is Larry. Uh, I, I want to get your reaction to Rick coming into Conference USA as one of your coaches. Does this elevate the coaching here? Does it make it tougher on you guys? I love it. I, I just, you know, I love competing against him. He's a friend. We're not, we don't talk on the phone once a week, but uh, I, I think there's a mutual respect, and in 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 I consider him a friend, and I, I just want to go say, hey, this is great for our league. Uh, you know, Bob Huggins in the league, Bobby Lutz, uh, Pat Kennedy, you can go right down. Tommy Cream's doing a fabulous job, and Seth and, you know, Murray. I mean, we've got a lot of terrific coaches. How about Billy Tubbs? I mean, this guy's uh, won a ton of games, so it's going to be fun. John, Rick made an interesting comment to us a little while ago. He said, you know what, I found out that I'm a college coach. Did you find out that same thing after a tough experience in the pros, then you come back to Memphis? Well, I got fired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, whether you want to be or not, you're not. You're going to do something different. But I enjoyed my pro experience, but the, the issue becomes, uh, uh, you know, at this time in my life with a young family, it was more that than even basketball. I mean, I've got a 14-year-old daughter and 11-year-old daughter. Does there exist some similarity now between the Memphis situation, you come back to a good basketball town, a major metropolitan area, and what Rick faces here in Louisville? I mean, this league is full of places like that, and uh, how's it going in Memphis right now in your quest to bring that program back? Well, we, we, we sold out our season tickets, uh, 17,500, and we've got 2,500 student tickets left. And, and this town is truly a basketball town. The difference between us and Louisville, Memphis High School basketball, every year there's going to be a couple players here that can help us win and compete for national titles. I'm not sure in the city of Louisville, maybe there are, I, but uh, historically you guys know as basketball junkies, both of you, that Memphis has had a ton of high school basketball players come through here. John, you're in your second year there at the University of Memphis, and uh, with Louisville and Patino beginning to uh, start to turn things around, are you beginning to see Conference USA as being one of those conferences that everybody's going to have to look at now and take seriously as one of the high RPI rankings? Well, the, the whole point of this is all of us, it's about the players. And, and it's great that, that, that Bobby's at Cincinnati, and, you know, but the bottom line is Rick, Bobby, Bobby Lou, we all got to get good players who can go against the other players around the country. And I think that's what you're going to start seeing. And, 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 and when the Conference USA was absolutely on the top of its game, it had pros. And, I mean, we're starting to do it at Memphis. I'm sure that's happening in Cincinnati. I mean, I watch Bobby play Oklahoma State. It's going to have to go through Cincinnati again. I mean, they just play so physical and kick and punch and do all the stuff they do. It's, 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 you're going to have to go to Cincinnati and win. You got Louisville. I thought they were going to throw a shutout. I thought it was a 21-run rule here that they're going to have to... <laughs> You know, hey, I mean, I, I'm watching these guys. I'm not sure we'll be able to get it in against them. <laughs> hey, John, thanks so much for your time. Congratulations on the win today, and we'll look forward to our frequent visits to Memphis on Conference USA and ESPN this year. Thanks, guys. John Calipari from Memphis. How about that? Getting him in the league last year, Rick Pitino this year. Carlos hurt for Rick. That basket, he's got four. By the way, just so it doesn't go unmentioned, that wonderful block of a few moments ago was Joseph Sima their senior who they're looking to really help this ball club this year 25 to 3 louisville halfway through the first half one of the things that john has i think he has one of the best centers in all of college basketball and kelly wise sema after the steal naden off the tip sema misses bender the freshman he gets grabbed on the way up and this is a total physical mismatch right now A lot of applause, and why not? 
Rick Pitino has put together what looks like a pretty good basketball team, at least tonight. Bob Wellick's not very happy right now. At the line, Brandon Bender. 6'9", 245 freshman out of Ballard High School here in Louisville. He was recruited by Alabama, Charlotte, UAB, West Virginia. And his first collegiate shot goes in. Kentucky High School Player of the Year last year. And at Ballard, his career total, 1,860 points. Number two to guess who? A kid by the name of Allen Houston, who did awfully well in Knoxville, and is doing very well in New York City. Look at that rebound, Eric Brown. Good strong board that time. Brown for three. Why not? If you get the rebound, go out and shoot the ball yourself. You got it? Put the ball in. On the run, Jamaicus Ricks off his foot. Bob Weltlick. The coach of the Jaguars of South Alabama and here at Freedom Hall in Louisville, blowout city, 10-30 into the ball game, 29-3 Louisville. They got off quickly with a bunch of USA turnovers. South Alabama, only one of six from the field. It took them about five minutes to get their second field goal attempt this night because of that rash of turnovers. Well, think of that. You've played almost, uh, what, nine minutes or 10 minutes and 40 seconds, and uh, all you've attempted is six shots. That's how tough it is to get it up the floor. You know, Bob Welling said to us in the shoot-around today, he said, listen, guys, he said, I'm telling you, we're rebuilding this program. Uh, not to make excuses for him because he'd rather not have it like this, but he says we're in the process of trying to put some things together, and he said we're going to struggle a little bit this year. Tonight they have really struggled. Larry O'Bannon, 22 at Louisville last year. His first collegiate points. Nine Cardinals have scored already. And a foul in the backcourt on O'Bannon. Tomorrow, ESPN and ESPN2, a triple header from Maui, the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Shamanad, the host team in South Carolina, 2 Eastern, ESPN. Number one, Duke, and Seton Hall at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Then over on ESPN2, 1130 Eastern, number four, UCLA, and Houston, Jason Capono, one of the good sharpshooters out there on the West Coast. He'll go a little further west and take on... Yeah, but that's, you know, Bob, that's going to be USA. That'll be our first look at Duke uh, this year. Obviously, I think they have the best backcourt in all of college basketball. Jason Williams and Chris Duhon, really a solid team. Defending national champions, you want to make sure you watch this club. This could be a terrific tournament. Kansas, UCLA, both with good clubs this year. Adam Salo had a good look, couldn't knock down the shot. This one out of bounds, the hustle of Eric Brown. Say one thing for Eric Brown. Last year, he was a scorer and little else. He's got to be impressing his new head coach right now. Bob, you know what I'm going to be looking for when I watch Duke play out in Maui? Uh, Dante Jones, the transfer from Rutgers, uh, is coming over this year to go with all of that talent that they've had. Not only the ones coming back this year, but a couple of good freshmen. But Jones is going to fit into that lineup, I think, awfully well. As if they need another weapon, right? <laughs> to make us rich. Our congrats to Coach K on that wonderful contract he's signing. Don't we always we could get that? Lifetime. How about that? The foul by Joseph Sima. And I think by the time Mike Zizewski hangs it up at Duke, which we hope is a long time from now, he will truly be recognized as one of the top three to five all-time greats. And for a lot of different reasons, not just the wins, the integrity, the program, the academics. At the line, Justin White, a 6'9 freshman from Tiny Inman, Kansas. They say in Inman, Kansas, with all the modern technology, they can still only get three TV stations. <laughs> that may be the only place in America. Good rebound. Thompson. Mm, just couldn't quite roll it in after a very good effort on the offensive glass. And then we've got a foul on South Alabama. It'll be on Justin White, his second. And the double bonus for Louisville now with 8.28 to go in the first half. You know, one of the things you like to do is start the season on a positive note. And right now, Louisville obviously is going to get away with this game and do it very early. 
you, you start to go in and get ready to play, this club is going to go on the road to Portland, Oregon, and play the only game that they're going to play outside the state of Kentucky in November and December. Hmm. They'll play the Ducks at the Rose Garden in Portland, November 24th. The Tino has scheduled Ohio State here. We'll see them play Tennessee on ESPN2 December 20th. And uh, a nice little intrastate battle on the 29th. A little How about Louisville at Kentucky. How about that when Patino walks onto the Rupp Arena floor? Yeah, that's going to be interesting. Also interested in seeing how they react to him. <laughs> Very interesting. Ellis Miles at the line. This rotation a little short with it. You know, one of the things that Ellis Miles did last year, I mean, as, as much as they struggled with their program in the season of last year, Ellis Miles had 55 assists, which is awfully good for a big guy inside. I'd like to have guys that are 6'7", six, 6'8", six, that can pass the ball besides muscle it inside. With all this loss of body fat, he's gotten himself into really good shape. He could end up having a pretty good year. Rebound pulled down by Joseph Sima, who you saw walk into the game. During that free throw pause, on the perimeter, Bryant Northern. On top to Miles, who comes out high post. Very high post. Looking to leave it for Brown. Good cut by him. To the baseline. Oh. And a rejection. That's an offensive foul on Eric Brown. He'll take the charge here for his first personal. Thalo with a nice block that time. Got it out and slapped it back. And the offensive foul was not against him. 31 to 4 Louisville. Straight ahead go the Jags and Brown tumbling into his man, Larry Thompson. Eric Brown with his second foul. Go back and take a look at this charge right here. Pretty nice job. Looks like the work was done inside. Demetrius Williams was the one who took the blow. Demetrius, a junior out of Forest Park, Georgia. And his teammate at the line, Larry Thompson. Another Georgia kid. Played at Fort Scott, Kansas last year in the Juco ranks. And back in, Simon Nagnoff for Louisville and Eric Brown, who's really worked hard, gets a breather. He's got nine points already. Larry Thompson out of Baker High School. Here are the Georgia guys. Is that Camilla or Camilla? It's Camilla. Camilla Jordan. Larry Conley, the pride of Dunwoody. <laughs> And also uh, the knower of all names in the state of Georgia. That's good. Simon Nadenoff on top to Bryant Northern. Looking to penetrate. He'll kick for the three, almost threw it away. O'Bannon, Seema, Parks moving the ball well. And a good rebound under there by Demetrius Williams of South Alabama. Jaguars are in the Western Division. They say the best team in that league will be Western Kentucky. They've already beaten Kentucky and GW this week. Two big wins for Western that. Kentucky. Lou Henson's Aggies of New Mexico State picked to win the West with Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, and South Alabama to follow. We've got the under eight-minute timeout, 7.15 to go first half. The Patino debut, very successful so far. They lead by 27. All right, Pam, Gonzaga looking for a little momentum as they head off to the Great Alaska Shootout. They'll play St. John's a couple of nights from now. I understand you're going to be there to kind of view that. I have my cold weather gear packed. <laughs> Monday Night Countdown previews ABC's Monday Night Football game as well as up to the minute NFL news, comprehensive analysis, live interviews, Mike Tirico, Tom Jackson, 7.30 Eastern, and then on ABC at 9, a rematch of last season's NFC Championship, the Giants and the Vikings. Log on to ESPN.com for more on NFL. NFL football. There's your keyword, NF, Monday Night Football. And then, of course, Maui gets underway tomorrow. The Great Alaska Shootout of Wednesday night. Now, wall the wall hoops here in the month of November as we get into those preseason exempt tournaments. Naden off with the jumper. In a short. You know, Bob, you bring up a great point. We're going to see a lot of good college teams on television this week, uh, particularly the ones that are higher ranked. Anytime you got Kansas, UCLA, and Duke in the same tournament, you know you've got a pretty good tournament. Demetrius Williams, we've got Indiana, Tennessee, Texas, St. John's. That's a pretty good group for Alaska. Marquette from Conference USA, Oregon State. 
And finally the whistle blows. Alaska Anchorage, the other team up there, the host team who we always see. And not to be forgotten, those Zags of Gonzaga. South Alabama gets the basketball back on the tie-up. Alternate possession. Ball thrown in by Demetrius Williams. I talked about Williams earlier in the game. He played in all has played in all 63 games over the last two years. In fact, he had a terrific defensive game against Reese Gaines last year. He held him to nine points. One of his lowest performances of the year. Demetrius, the 6'2 junior out of Forest Park, Georgia. Preseason all Sun Belt. As chosen by the league's coaches. Larry Thompson out on top to Jamaica's Ricks. Is their motion offense? What South Alabama likes to do with about 18 on the shot clock, they'll overload one side. They call that play number one. And the finger roll up and in, but it looks like an offensive foul before that. Tom O'Neill with the whistle and foul number one on Larry Thompson. Well, Thompson thought he found a little gap to get in there on the defense against Louisville, but it closed very quickly. Pretty nice job right there by Nadenoff or Nadenoff to get in position to draw that charge. Yeah, the young man from Bulgaria took the charge there. 31 to 4, 6.20 before halftime. Hurts. Ooh, that hurts if you're the opposition. Carlos with his first career three-pointer. Played three years of high school basketball in Houston. Moved to Louisville with his parents prior to his senior year at Moore High School. His mom and dad both attended the University of Louisville. So some family roots running deep, and here he is as a Cardinal. Ellis Miles coming up with that loose ball. There's a three. Carlos Hurt with another double figures for the freshman. South Alabama with another timeout. Thirty-seven to four. Well, Carlos Hurts, one of those guys that Louisville's trying to build their program around, and why not? When you get a freshman like this who can handle it, can shoot it, he's picked up the system that Rick Pitino wants to put into play, and it's very important that you have a point guard who can do that. How about the applause from the bench? Twenty-two turnovers. 32 points by Louisville off of those turnovers. I guess at some point you ask, well, when's Rick Pitino going to call off the dogs here, even though it's early? But Larry, he's a new coach. He's got a lot of things this club needs to work on here. Well, that's the point. I, I think when you see this and you see the score, you think, well, why doesn't he back off because it looks like he's gotten the beat? But you've got things you've got to work on in November to get ready for January, February, and March. Well, Patino gets him ready, uh, ready better than just about anybody in college basketball. Eric Brown, big night so far. Yeah, watch Eric Brown right there with a the jumper right in front of the South Alabama bench, but he can also take it to the hole. Watch him back out again, this time with another three. That off of a rebound, taking it out and making the long-range jumper. Eric Brown, I think, poised to really have a pretty good year this year. Eric Brown doing it all. Couple of rebounds. Three out of six, two for two from three-point range. South Alabama, this club won 22 games last year, went 11 and five in the Sun Belt, and won the West. Adam Salo on top, looking left side, Justin White. Cut down low by Chris McLavish, a Flint, Michigan kid who's one of their reserve guards. Shot clock down to five, a drive on uh, Demetrius Williams and a foul. Looks like Brandon Bender. That's going to be Simon Nadenoff getting him for his second. And uh, South Alabama. Pretty good move to the hoop that time by Williams. Sometimes called USA. University of South Alabama, school of 12,000 students out of Mobile. One of the original members of the Sun Belt Conference. There have been a number who have come and gone in that league, but they were one of the original charter members. They've only been playing basketball since 68. The school's been open since 63. They have a wonderful new arena, Mitchell Center. Larry's been there. It seats 10,000. They've won eight season titles and four tournament titles in the Sun Belt. 
including last year. 37 to 6. Bryant Northern on top for Carlos Hurt. Hurt was very fortunate that time. Find somebody open. He was up in the air and had nowhere to shoot the ball because he was too far out. Look at the turn to the baseline. That is the svelte and quicker Ellis Miles. It's obvious to me, and I can see this because last year I had them seven or eight times, but Miles is a much quicker player. Watch him get this ball. Now watch him make this turn. A little spin move on the baseline. Oh, that's nice. That's the way you do it when you lose about 30 pounds. You get to the ball or get to the basket a lot quicker with the ball in your hands. If Ellis Miles can play lots of minutes this year, Rick Pitino will have something going. Ellis very foul prone last year. His points were limited. He's halfway to a double double right now on both counts. Nice arc and rotation on that free throw. And you know a guy like him over the next three years will spend some time at that line. Carlos hurt the steal, then he couldn't save it with a great effort in the backcourt. Block running with 4.45 to go first half. Off it goes for Larry Thompson. Back on top, Demetrius Williams. Ball's been in his hands most of the time lately. Well, Brian Northern doing a terrific job out front on Demetrius Williams. Northern, very quick hands and quick feet. Ricotino was applauding that move defensively out front. Good seal. Oh, Seema rejecting White. He gets the rebound and Justin White first basket. But Joseph Seema's got two blocks in this game now. 39-8. Jags looking for double figures here soon. 4.20 to go first half. Seema way up front. Looking to hand it off finally for Carlos Hurt. Might have been a travel, it was. Oh, there you go. Yes, Let's go back and take a look at that block by Seema down underneath. This is another guy that has athletically gotten much better. Look at that block and a nice save on the other side and good catch and stick back by Justin White. They like Justin White, 6'9", 220. He was a very good high jumper, triple jumper, and long jumper in Inman, Kansas. K-State recruited him, so did SIU and Creighton. And a loose ball, Ellis Miles. He was fouled on his way down the sideline by Demetrius Williams. That will be his third. Maui tomorrow, Chaminade, South Carolina, 2 Eastern ESPN. 9 o'clock, Seton Hall, number one Duke. And then on ESPN2, Conference USA gets a chance at those Bruins of the Pac-10, the Cougars of Houston, and the Bruins of UCLA, the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Coming up tomorrow. Keep an eye on that South Carolina club. They may surprise a lot of people in the Southeastern Conference this year. I think they're going to be a little bit better than, than most people think. They've got a great man at the helm. Well, the one thing I like about the fact that the Southeastern Conference has in that Eastern Division, Kentucky and Florida, and oftentimes other clubs get overlooked. And Dave Odom, uh, obviously with a chance to maybe surprise a few people at South Carolina this year. Ten more attempts at the line by the Cards. Ellis Miles. There's a whistle. Probably a Louisville player. Maybe Seema over the top. And to walk to the other end. Joseph Seema. Well, folks, in a few moments, we're going to give you a look back at an era that we, we need to pay respects to here at Louisville. The years of Denny Crum. 30 years. Six Final Fours, two national titles. Naismith Basketball Hall of Famer seven years ago. 675 wins for John Wooden's protege, Denny Crown. He learned from the best, didn't he? He did indeed. And of course, uh, you and I have known Denny for many, many years. I miss seeing him on the bench. But they've got an awful good man running the program right now. White can't knock down either. And the rebound cleared off by Brandon Bender. That's a big freshman in there at 6'9", 245. Loose ball, almost taken away by Jamaicus Ricks. Northern on the drive, looking for Bender. Fronting him was Adam Salo to prevent that entry pass. Alabama really beginning to extend their defense now. Hurt. 
There's Bender, the freshman. Slipping it down low. Nice assist. Ellis Miles, the finish. The freshman to the sophomore. You think they don't have a nice future here in Louisville? And Patino's going to have some big-time players coming in here, too. Jumper, baseline left, swish, Larry Thompson, nicely done. You know, the staff at South Alabama talks an awful lot about this guy. They say if he can learn to play the total game, they think he's got good enough skills to play at any any level. They think he's awfully good. A little mid-range game that a lot of guys don't have these days. On the drive, Larry O'Bannon. One of the coaches told me today, he says, we've been waiting for this guy to really explode. He hasn't done it in practice so far. He's got a full season ahead of him, though. At the line, Larry O'Bannon. Always think it's nice to have guys who can create their own shots, that can create off the dribble. And that's one thing that Thompson can do. O'Bannon with his third point of the night. Justin White gets a breather for South Alabama. Marcus Ivey out of Milwaukee will check back in. Larry O'Bannon, a 1,990-point scorer in the high school ranks, knocks it down. Four for him. 44 10 to Louisville. This program built by Denny Crum. More on the great Crum in a moment. And that's been to 29 NCAAs, less than only Kentucky, UCLA, and North Carolina. The man who made almost all of it happen, Denny Crum. Yeah, in all the years that we have watched his clubs play, they've always been so strong, so physical. Two national championships under that man. And of course, there's Kosciuszewski and there's Denny Crum. And Hall of Fame had some great clubs while he was here and when he was the head coach many times I would come in here and you always got the feeling you're coming in to watch championship basketball and there were two of their banners right there and there he is Bob sitting in the crowd Denny Crum 33 and 3 Denny was with that club in 80 32 and 7 in 86 and now a spectator here five final fours the great championships and by the way those winning free throws they came from Milt Wagner about to be better known as Dewan's dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Jamaica's rich. We talked to John Calipari about his unbelievable freshman earlier. Can't wait to see him. South Alabama, their half-court offense. How about that left-hander? Wouldn't quite go down for Marcus Ivey. Adam Salo in traffic. The Cardinals just pawing away at him all over the place. Bryant Northern. Pretty good Three rebound. File. Good job by Salo down inside to get that offensive rebound. Adam Salo, an Iowa kid out of Manchester. He was a McDonald's honorable mention All-American last year. I don't know how many free throws he banked in at West Delaware High did School. Did you see that look? He, he did a little, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did that. Larry, when you're a finalist for Mr. Basketball, they go in for you no matter how. <laughs> He shot 39% from three-point range. That's pretty strong for somebody 6'8". Back iron with that one. And the rebound, Larry O'Bannon. Final two and a half. First half cards by 33. alley -oop. Ball hit the glass right to Miles. Everything's finding Ellis right now. And one of the Jags fouled him on the way in. I tell you what, when things are going well for you, they really do go well. You try an alley-oop, if it's not there and it comes off the glass, there's somebody in a white uniform there to pick it off. And I hope Bob Wellwood has enough bodies for the second half. He has four players with three fouls now. He actually came into this game. I think he's only got nine players eligible. I'm looking over at the bench right now. Obviously, five on the floor. There are only four guys left in uniform over there. They've got a couple of players. Matt Forger from France and Benjamin Sormonte from France, who are ineligible because the NCAA yet hasn't ruled on how long they have to sit out after playing club basketball over in Europe. Matt Forger from the Bordeaux region of France. That would have been fun to go recruit him. <laughs> I could see some coach sending Larry Conley over there and two weeks later wondering, where is he? <laughs> Bordeaux, France. <laughs> He's never coming back. In the corner. Just in the plane. Chris McLavish on the miss. The rebound and the outlet for Carlos Hurt. Naden off receiving the diagonal. Straight ahead, Ellis Miles. He's going to have 40 or more touches in this game tonight. Banker, sweet. Ellis Miles with 11. Oh, he's doing a good job of positioning down low on that block, and South Alabama is relinquishing that position so easily. He's simply getting good looks at the basket and finishing him off. 
A minute 40 before halftime. Total Cardinal domination. Adam Salo on the drive. Ball finds his small little teammate in there, and it's nothing there for Jamaica's Ricks. Hurt, keying the break. Naden off, lost it, off his knee. It'll go back to the Jaguars of South Alabama, and Louisville will check in Mac Wilkinson, a 6'8 sophomore. Coming up on the Remington Halftime Report with Pam Ward. Juan Wagner leading those Memphis Tigers. We'll see the Zags against Montana. And Preston Shumpert coming up big for Syracuse. He went for 36, huh? Pretty good, nice work. Yeah, they're going to be good again. The Orange, uh, Jim Beheim. I'll tell you one thing, he's got one great shooter, Preston Shepard. He can really fill it up. Mac Wilkinson on the foul. Freedom Hall, Louisville, one of the greatest venues over the last 47 years for college basketball. They've played six Final Fours on this floor. And by the way, they have 18,865 seats. 17,800 of them are season tickets. You know, Bob, they've uh, redone this uh, Freedom Hall here. They've spent a little over $3 million to revamp this place and really have improved it. And most of it was done out in the corridors outside. But And they've got a brand-new football stadium. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I saw it on the way to Churchill Downs. He's also going through a lot of renovation over there, one of my favorite stops. Yeah, I, I heard you went by there today to visit some of your money. When I, when I come to town, they send a car. <laughs> Here's Hurt on the drive, losing control. They have wonderful facilities on campus just north of here at the University of Louisville. There's an open shot for Larry Thompson, and down goes the three. Thompson Five might, for him. Might be the brightest star in this first half for South Alabama. 47-15, final 30 seconds now in the first half. Cam Ward straight ahead with a full menu of halftime reports for you. There's Nadenoff curling off the screen. It's off of his leg and another turnover for Louisville. They've turned it over eight times. John, it's off the net. Rick Pitino's debut tonight. He's a UMass alum, class of 74, out of St. Dominic's on Long Island. He's still youthful, 49 years of age. Over the out-of-bounds line, Larry Thompson with that fumble. 24 turnovers. Yikes. Final seven seconds. Carlos Hurt. Clock running out. Two seconds. They won't get a shot. And after 20 minutes of play, Louisville 47, South Alabama 15. Pam Ward, it started with a lot of turnovers, and Louisville's had it all their way ever since. Yes, indeed, South Alabama with 15, Louisville at the half, a 32-point lead. Alabama had a hard time getting shots early, South Alabama, that is. They go only 4 for 16, a very low shot count, and the turnovers, Larry, killed them early. Louisville's been pretty good and very intense defensively. Well, they have. I mean, South Alabama's 22 turnovers. They've converted nearly half of those into points. Louisville looks very, very sharp tonight. Obviously, they're playing against a team. They've outmanned South Alabama, but I think they're off to a great start, Bob. This could be a little bit better club than I thought. Yeah, you know, forget about the numbers and the score and all that. The big thing for Louisville is this style of play that Rick Pitino brings. He loves the motion offense in the half court, but he's an up-tempo, three-point type coach, and he loves man-to-man -man pressure. They love to press and run. You know, in the first eight years, Bettino was the head coach. When they brought in the three-point line, he went to four Final Fours during that time. That tells you something about the man able to take advantage. And, Larry, the thing I keep hearing from different people about Bettino's coaching of offense, he is an absolute expert when it comes to spacing on the court and giving your guys room to operate and get those kind of shots. Well, and also knowing the angles. He's great at teaching guys about how to position themselves on the floor. This was his record at Kentucky in eight seasons. 330 win seasons, obviously three Final Fours and that national championship in 95-96. That other Final Four came in 87 at Providence.
when a club that had won the NIT, or gone to the NIT the year before that, went 25 and nine. Here we go, second half. Cardinals moving right to left. Reese Gaines, who didn't play a whole lot in the first half, only four minutes, looking for some dribble penetration. Bob, to get back to that point you were making about Rick Pitino, I remember when the three-point field goal started. That 86-87 season when he took that team to New Orleans to the Final Four and Providence beat Georgetown in the regional finals. I was absolutely amazed at how they took full advantage of that three-point shooting. I think he was really the first guy to do that. And, of course, he had a great shooter in Billy Donovan, mm -hmm. a guy that could go out there and deliver that three-point field goal for him. Another quick foul on Chris McLavish, his third on the drive by Reese Gaines. You know, it's interesting that Billy Donovan at Florida has also picked up the mantle, if you will, and carried it. I mean, he's all his clubs also do the same thing. And I know Larry Conley, who works a lot in the Southeastern Conference, thinks that the O'Connell Center in Gainesville might be one of the most underrated atmospheres for college basketball in the country. It's not a doubt in my mind. I think it's one of the toughest places for a visiting team simply because Donovan's got him going now. You walk into that place, it is charged up. My ears are still ringing from Friday night in Stillwater. Wasn't it way. great? That was something that crowd was wonderful down there. And Bob Huggins was very complimentary toward them the following day and all the quotes he had in the Oklahoma newspapers. Eric Brown long on that little leader and the rebound, the outlet for Dem Demetrius Williams of South Alabama. The Jaguars out of the Sun Belt Conference. As I mentioned, they've only been playing basketball since 1968. School opened there five years before that, down on those beautiful Gulf Shores in Mobile. This one will stay with the Jaguars. Their athletic director, good buddy of yours, Joe Gottfried, is here. Yeah, I've spent a couple of days with him. He used to be a basketball coach over at Southern Illinois. He's got a brother who knows a little bit about football, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Does a little bit. Got the name of Mike Gottfried. And, of course, his son is one of the outstanding young coaches in the country, Mark Gottfried, at the University of Alabama. And I know you like them in the SEC this yeah, year. Yeah, I really do. I think in the Western Division that Alabama is going to be one of those teams that's going to challenge. I think all the oh. Arkansas are going to be there, too. How about the bank shot for a three? from Hart. Up. Carlos Hurt with three threes now tonight. He's three for four beyond the arc. He's going to be a Patino Bombino, as they used to call those cats, right here in Louisville. Nice pass. Great service by Demetrius Williams and the finish by Justin White. Good stuff there. That might have been the best trip down the floor for South Alabama tonight. It was. Well, smiles up at the very high post. We'll do a little switcheroo with Eric Brown. Then the bounce pass down to Miles, who went to the left block. Look at him operate. Nobody can stop him, but he couldn't roll it around and in. If ball was hugging that iron. McLavish right there to pick it off underneath. Here's McLavish, a freshman guard out of Flint, Michigan, Northwestern High School. A rejection by Miles. And for Ellis, his first block of the night, he's had four steals. Justin Joseph White. Sima has three blocks. Yeah, Justin White's going to have to learn to get that shot off a little bit quicker. Right back to Miles. Little two-man game with Hurt. Pulleys his way in. And the officials letting him play a little bit here in the early part of the second half. Two and a half minutes in. 52-19 Louisville. There's the entry. Backing away. Tough night for Henry Williams. He has not scored. He had to sit down early as he got his third foul. Only four minutes and four seconds into the game. Nobody got on Whitehead until it was too late. I think Henry Williams, is that his fourth foul? Oh, brother. Henry with four now. Good pass underneath. Watch again as Luke Whitehead catches it. Goes up strong, draws the foul. Get a couple of charity tosses from the stripe. This is a guy also that has bought into Rick Pitino's program. Uh, he's picked up his game. He's going up and down the floor a lot quicker. Playing the type of game that uh, most people thought he could play when he came out of San Francisco, California, and also Oak Hill Academy over in Virginia. Yep, St. Ignatius in San Francisco. I saw an interesting game on the ESPN schedule coming up in December. The University of San Francisco, the Dons, and they won an NCAA championship at that school, two of them. They will play at Fresno State. Looking forward to that one. The Fresno club supposed to be the best of the whack. Ellis Miles a foul as he rides the hip of Justin White. 
Fresno State off to a good start. They beat a pretty good Southern California team to advance in the NIT. Boy, did they. Convincingly to go to New York City. Nice little look off the inbounds pass and a beautiful banker by Larry Thompson. He's starting to show you some of that potential my partner was talking about in the first half. Nine for Larry, the junior from Camilla, Georgia. Carlos Hurt run the point for Louisville. There's the skipper for Reese Gaines. That was a double skipper. <laughs> the herd out there now there's a freshman pointing the way come out here and set the screen let's run the offense whitehead hangs can't quite score justin whitehead an uncontested rebound slipped away from him but the jags get it anyway you know it's interesting experiences you have in college basketball you and i have watched a lot of games you can always tell freshmen they always look so much more frail than most of the guys who've been in college basketball they have a little more definition and a little the skeletal system, the muscular system is a lot stronger looking. I was just looking that time on that rebound by Justin White and he lost it. And I was looking at his body. He's just not filled out yet uh -huh. like he will in another year or two. 6'9", 220. Now that sounds good. I mean, but when you look at him, you know he's a freshman. Yeah. There he is. Comparatively speaking, standing next to some of the white bodies we had out here like Ellis Miles. Well, I'm looking at Luke Whitehead standing next to him right now. He's 6'7", he weighs 215. A little more chiseled. Mm -hmm. And Eric Brown with the free throw down. That's double figures for him. What his average was last year. Lavish has to leave. He just committed his fourth foul. Marcus Ivey is back. Jamaica's Ricks back for the Jaguars of South Alabama. It's a school that's been to six NCAAs. The last time was in 98. Illinois got him in the first round. They've been the most successful Sun Belt club over the last half dozen years. Larry O'Bannon back for Louisville. He had four points, a couple of rebounds in the first half. And I'll tell you, Bob Weltlick was rewarded for all that success. He signed a new four-year contract that takes him through the 2004-2005 season. Well-deserved. Bob Weltlick, an Ohio boy out of Orville. Right over there by Massillon in the Akron area where they play a lot of great high school football. Reese Gaines working hard. I'm telling you, he is terrific on defense. I mean, we know about his offensive ability, but he is great with his hands and his feet. Because of his size, Reese Gaines at 6'6". At guard, he's considered their best defensive player. Scott Thornley with a whistle. Ellis Miles with his third. We'll hear a little more from Rick Pitino as the night goes on. Larry Conley had a significant conversation with him yesterday. And we've got the under 16-minute timeout. Four minutes and two seconds in. Bob Weltlick, the opposition coach. Rick Patino, the debut. We'll hear from Coach Rick more with Patino in a moment. Alaska, the Great Alaska Shootout. Charlotte, a good team in this Conference USA. More on Rick Patino. Lots of changes need to be made when you come into a new program. They're spending a lot of money to renovate the facilities. And Patino working on a lot of different things. The way you treat them off the court is new. The way you treat them on the court is new. They get used to you, you get used to them. And there's so much to absorb, and none of it is repetition. It's so much easier in the second year than it is the first. But I'm having a blast with these guys because they give me everything they can. Uh, they're not where I'd like a team to be, but I expect that. And, but they give me tremendous effort, and that's all a coach can ask. Larry Connolly's conversation with Rick Pitino in its entirety on Sports Center tomorrow night. You had a good sit down with him yesterday. Yeah, I did. Uh, it was probably about 30 or 35 minutes, and uh, you'll have a chance to listen to some of uh, his philosophies, some of the things he's trying to do here at the University of Louisville. Kind of interesting, uh, in our conversation, I brought up the fact that uh, he had been to four different colleges, this being his fourth. And in each situation, he had taken over a club that had had a losing season the year before. We, we talk a lot, of, a lot about uh, coaching in NBA, coaching in college, a lot of different facets of the game. Not only about the way colleges are, but also about the way the NBA is and also the way he coaches. Interesting conversation. Look forward to it. I'll have my parka on when I'm watching you tomorrow night. <laughs> Reese Gaines in long underwear. <laughs> well, let's not get too personal about it. Luke Whitehead with the follow, a half dozen for him. For those of you who don't know, Bob will be at Anchorage during the Great Alaska Shootout, and he's leaving early in the morning, and 
I'm waving, uh, waving and bidding adieu tonight. Jimmy Dykes and I with our version of the Iditarod basketball race starting tomorrow. <laughs> Always be the lead dog in that situation. I hear you, brother. 15 and a half to go here. Louisville, 58-23. It is a great tournament up there, the folks in Anchorage. There's an Air Force base up there for a lot of those folks. Their only chance to see Division One. And Reese Gaines, yeah, he's a D1 guard. There's that size we talked about, jamming it in at 6-6. And looking right back on the defensive end. Challenging, got the turnover. He gets it back, Whitehead from Gaines. Nicely done with a two-man defensive game. Timeout, South Alabama. How about Reese Gaines? Gets the layup, turn around, puts the defensive pressure on, gets the turnover, and makes the pass for the assist. He's going to be a star in this league, playing like one tonight. Five minutes out of halftime, 62-23. Boy, Bob Weltlick could use Luis Gonzalez right now. <laughs> and if you're wondering what in the world is Carpenter talking about, Luis Gonzalez went to South Alabama. They're going to retire his baseball number, number 25, on November 28th. There were 28 Jaguars this year in minor league and major league baseball. How about that for a factory? Terrific baseball program. Underneath, a good look. It won't go down for Justin White. The great Eddie Stanky was a Jaguar. In fact, his grandson plays for USA. How about these guys? John Lieber, Juan Pierre of the Rockies, Marlon Anderson of the Phillies, Mike Mordecai, the longtime Brave, all South Alabama alums, Major League Baseball players. And they continue with a strong baseball program down there, down there too. Play all year down there on the... And they do. Beach of <laughs> Mobile. Reese Gaines with a foul. That'll be his third. Well, Gonzalez had a great year. One of the nicest men ever to play Major League Baseball, Luis Gonzalez. They got it in. A travel call on Larry Thompson. Can't do that. Can't go up and come down with it. <laughs> Miles from Whitehead, South Alabama trying to a little bit of pressure now. The only problem they may have, Larry, with this kind of full court defense is the war of attrition. Watch this, Bob. Good play right here. Just bounced it off of his back, went up, came down with it. You got to be able to release it, get rid of it. Pretty smart play. <laughs> yeah, but you got to get the shot off. Now it's Miles with a charge. I'll say one thing. Bob Weltnick's kids will not stop playing hard. He won't put up with it. And you know when you play his clubs, whether over the years at Ole Miss, Texas, Florida International, or now in his fifth year at South Alabama, they are a good fundamental club. Tonight was not their night. The turnovers early killed them from having any chance in this game. But they are out there to work. They've got some things at stake later down the road as well. Yeah, they're going to do a little bit better flow in the game right now. They're being able to run their offense. Of course, the pressure from Louisville not nearly as great as it was in that first half. Hey, listen to their December. They'll play at Mississippi State. They'll host Southern Miss. And James Green did as good a job in Conference USA with those Eagles as anybody last year. Tied the league title last year. Conference Coach of the Year. They will play Georgia at home. And again, they'll go to Auburn, where they won a game on the road last year. Sunbelt Tournament's in New Orleans this March. And it'll go back to the cards. Conference USA will have its tournament in Cincinnati, March 6th through the 9th. Carlos Hurt over for Whitehead. Luke splits the defense. Miles will leave it for Hurt. O'Bannon. Reese Gaines. Barely nicked iron with it. And it'll be standing on the baseline on Iman Hunter. Hunter was pleading with Tom O'Neill. He says, I wasn't on the line. Yes, you were. Nothing gets by these guys. Reese Gaines having a busy night. Three for five from the field. He's got a three, a couple of rebounds, an assist, and nine points. Hurt way out there. A little long with it. Miles skying. Ellis Miles, so active. But I think a lot of it has to do with all of that weight that he has lost because I'm seeing a different player this year than what I have witnessed. This guy is all over the floor. He's doing a good job with his hands. He's moving. Very mobile inside. Rick Pitino 
teaches offense as well as anybody in the country. And there's a free throw up and in for Ellis Miles. His top assistant now is Mick Cronin, who came over from Bob Huggins' staff. Mick told me the other day, Rick Pitino is the best teacher of offense he's ever been around. In the same breath, he added, Bob Huggins is the most knowledgeable coach regarding defense I've ever been around. And that's a club that'll really get after you, those Bearcats of Cincinnati. You bet. You saw that the other night in Stillwater as they forged to come back after being down plenty early. I think they got it back to within four at one time in the second half. Right side jumper. Air ball won't go for Marcus Ivey. The freshman, Carlos Hurt. Straight ahead to Whitehead. That was a great pass by the freshman. Great catch. And then Whitehead hustling. That'll earn him some brownie points with his head coach. Coming in to hustle from behind. Luke Whitehead, six points, three boards. 13 games started as a freshman last year. Carlos Hurt will get a breather as Bryant Northern checks back in. Back in Henry Williams. You might as well play him. He's got four fouls, but Bob Weltnick needs to give Henry Williams something he can build on from this first game of the season. Well, he also needs some playing time right now. What he's going to do is avoid that fifth foul. Yeah, he's only played about seven minutes the whole game. Sweet touch there. Adam Salo, the man from Manchester, Iowa. Six you know, for him. Of all the guys I was watching in the shoot-around today at South Alabama, he had the best stroke of any of them. O'Bannon short with his jumper. The athleticism of Luke Whitehead keeps that one alive. More than any other player in this club, Luke Whitehead will benefit from Rick Pitino's system. He loves to be active, gets all over the court, runs the floor, he's very fast. And that one squirts right by him. But it was touched by... Didn't touch anybody. Luke Whitehead came back in better shape as all of these guys did. They have a brand new cardiovascular room just off of their practice gym over there at Cardinal Arena. It's a wonderful facility. They're spending $250,000 to upgrade it and some of the other things here at Freedom Hall. Eight points for Adam Salo now. Reese Gaines rimmed out. Northern the rebound. Reese again. He won't miss he won't in a row. That's right. 12 for the junior out of Madison, Wisconsin. He'll be a 1,000-point scorer here in his career, and he'll end up somewhere between 400 and 500 assists. Terrific player. You know, Bob, one of the things that uh, Rick Pitino and doing what he's doing here at Louisville is we watch another basket. Oh, Henry right. Williams first. They put in this uh, training program to uh, get everybody to lose weight and put themselves in great condition, and he's been doing so much running. He had a great quote the other day. He says, you know, he said, we know they're getting in shape because with all their running they've done now, they've stopped throwing up, but he says, now I, now I'm watching to play defense, and I'm throwing up. Oh. <laughs> Adam Salo with the foul. They will wear out some sneakers here in Louisville Ooh. this year. Gaines. For those of you who don't know and don't follow Conference USA, they have expanded to 14 teams this year. East Carolina comes in with TCU, Mr. Billy Tubbs. And Mr. Tubbs has announced uh, he's leaving at the end of the year, so he will only participate one year in Conference USA. East Carolina. TCU. East Carolina got a couple of nice wins against Rutgers and Northwestern. That'll look good on the old computer a little later in the season. The Pirates more known for their football. Steve Logan, an Oklahoma guy who's coached football over there for years and years, has done a wonderful job with ECU. And we know all about Billy Tubbs. How about the coaches in this league? Pretty good. I'd pay to go to a bank at banquet just to hear them all talk. <laughs> Much less coach. Well, you love to be a fly on the wall when they have their coaches meetings during the spring. Get that, Joe. Get that. Get that, Joe. All we need now is Norm Stewart to come back with Billy for one more year. Were they something in the Big Eight yeah, back they, then? They were terrific. Unbelievable. 69-29. We know Norm's enjoying his time. Here's a look down to the right side. Iman Hunter back on top. McLavish with the drive. Right down the paint it goes for another turnover. 11.45 to go. 69-29. LewisPN.com for more on Monday Night Football and the NFL. 
Full court pressure again by South Alabama. Why not work on it? If you're down 69-29, you got to find something you can at least point a finger to and say, we did this well. Good press. Yeah, good angles by Louisville to break the pressure. Bryant Northern, who can shoot the three, misfiring a little bit there. Say low the entry. Got to catch it before you make your move. I am in Hunter. He didn't play at all last year as a walk-on, a sophomore out of Marietta, Georgia. 30 turnovers by USA. Hunter's mostly a garbage man. They cleared it with less than a second to go on the time clock. And at the other end, Eric Brown, 13 for him. Two-time All-Stater over at Bryan Station High School in Lexington, just a little bit east of here. On the wing, that's Chris McLavish, himself a walk-on. Ball tipped, shot clock at 13. As the Jaguars will throw it back in, Justin White will come back in. We've got 10.46 remaining in the ballgame. Louisville led 47-15 at the half here at Freedom Hall. Their wonderful home floor, Carpenter and Conley, as we give you a little early preview of Louisville in Conference USA and South Alabama in the Sun Belt. 31 turnovers for South Alabama, and Louisville's been able to capitalize with 39 points after those turnovers. Unable to finish, Justin White. As Larry mentioned earlier, those plays will come with a little more strength. The alley-oop a little too far. Eric Brown very calmly saving that ball. The whole crowd hollered three, but it didn't go for Eric Brown. Then a whitehead miss, and here come the Jaguars. You know, Bob, there are a lot of people probably watching this game at home right now and thinking, you know, why in the world, uh, well, let's watch Whitehead finish this up. Oh, nice job that time. Inside, slapping away by Chris You know what? Rick Pitino is hacked off. He had a guy with a layup. He was going to do a 360 spin dunk, and Rick says, buddy, you're out of the game for this. Yep, that's exactly what's going to happen. Lay the ball up and in, and the coach just sat him down. He couldn't get... Haji Mohammed into the game quick enough after watching that. Now, if that uh, name Mohammed sounds familiar, well, it should. Najee Mohammed is the brother of Nazi Mohammed, who played for Rick Patino over in Kentucky and now plays for the Atlanta Hawks. And Patino has been very close to that family. There's a rejection. Another block. Joseph Sima. That's four or five blocks for him tonight. 30 seconds. We'll call it Otis George instead, who just checked in. A freshman out of Dominica. They've got some uh, reserves out there seeing some time now. Nine thirty-four remaining, 71-29. Well, we want to talk about the defense. The difference is the defense and the way that uh, they've done this. Eric Brown with a tremendous block right there. Seema with the block on the inside. Gaines with the steal and the pass to Whitehead. Excellent defensive work again by Louisville. And also finishing it off in transition with baskets. By the time you get a turnover, you got to take advantage of it, and the Cardinals have done that. Just a footnote on Nazi Muhammad, the former Wildcat Larry was talking about. He just signed a six-year, $30 million contract with the Hawks. And that family that's been through some personal struggles with some death in the family the last couple of years. Little brother's here doing quite well, and Nazi will be able to take care of all of it. And maybe little brother will as well by the time it's all over. The contract's almost as big as yours. It's in the neighborhood. Just missed a couple of zeros. <laughs> yeah, but we're having fun. That's all that matters. You bet. Nine and a half to go, 71-29, U of L. Eric Brown on the way. And on top, Muhammad's out there. Brown waves him down the left side. High pick and roll by Joseph Sima. Eric Brown, unable to drill it. Kept alive there by Otis George. And the cards will refire with a fresh 35 in the shot clock. Al-Haji Muhammad. Eric Brown. There's that high pick and roll by George. Brown didn't take advantage of that one. He had a good shot. Mohammed, nice. Pass. Great look. 
Oh, what a good looking pass that was. And the finish by Joseph Sima. Big brother will like that one. Mohammed with a good look and a good delivery. The entry. George getting his man tied up. Henry Williams. It's been tough going in there for Henry. That assist worth another look. Elijah Mohammed again. Watch him draw the defense and drop the ball down inside for an easy layup by Sima. There he is, Al Haji, 6'2", 180, sophomore guard out of Country Club Hills, Illinois, Chicago area. Brown, coast to coast, nobody can stop Eric, and he's got 15. He averaged 19 a game as a freshman at Moorhead State. That was the top figure for any first-year player in Division I. Good look down low. Won't go. Marcus Ivey threw up an air ball, probably expecting some contact. Here's Gaines. Ivey slapping away at him. Block running down to the eight-minute mark. Straight ahead, Gaines lost his man. Demetrius Williams didn't stay with him, and Reese Gaines with 16, 11 of those in the second half. Pretty good look again. Nice passing by Louisville the last couple of trips down the floor, finding the open man. Reward the guy that gets open. Muhammad the foul. Larry, I know we've got a little time left here, and it's been sort of a blowout situation. But in that basketball analytical mind of yours, what have you seen from this Louisville club that you like so far? Well, we got a couple of things, and we'll talk about it when we come back. 7.44 to go. Conley's observations from Freedom Hall in a moment. Well, thank you, Pam. We're looking forward to that event up there. Jared Jeffries, the 6'10 sophomore out of North High School in Bloomington. He'll be one of the go-to guys for Mike Davis, who did a real nice job with that Indiana ball club last year. And that Charlotte scores of interest to some folks here as they play the Hoosiers. Charlotte picked to finish second in the American Division of Conference USA behind Cincinnati, ahead of Marquette. Louisville was picked fourth by the coaches. Down it goes, Ivy, completely stuffed. Right back at him he goes, but a double dribble. Bob, to answer your question before we went to break, there are a couple of things I think Rick Pitino can be very pleased with. He obviously knows that he's got a basketball team who can play up and down the floor, 94 feet. The competition is not what they're going to see once they get into conference play. But I think you can be pleased with the positive notes he can take away from this from the way his club came out ready to play. Come out flat. But they also had a little retribution on their mind, too. I mean, you got to remember the South Alabama team beat them last year. Yes, they did. These players were ready to come out and show that they are a much better basketball team than the club that was here last year. That was at the Mitchell Center in Mobile. Chris McLavish fouls out with 7.21 to go. Louisville, of course, will take on Ohio State in December, Tennessee on ESPN2, at Kentucky, at Indiana in February on the night. And, of course, we mentioned earlier the game against Oregon at Portland at the Rose Garden on November 24th. And Denny Crum never ducked the competition. Neither did Rick Pitino at Kentucky. So following in this Louisville can, you know, tradition of taking on all comers, and that's why Denny Crum went to Final Fours and won national championships. And Larry, some of those seasons, he would lose nine or ten games in doing so. But one of those discussions we get into every year, those of us who follow college basketball, the type of schedule you play in November and December. Do you want to find out how good your club is going to be? Then you've got to go out and play the best, find out where your weak links are, and simply work on that and I think it's very important and I think you not only find out how good you are the experience itself makes you better look at that work Muhammad Haj Turner he just checked in and Reese Gaines gave him a nice speed yeah but once again it was the defense that turned it over for the offense Al Haji Muhammad Al Haji Muhammad Jr. I might add 81-29 Louisville, 4 or 6.40 to go now. Larry Thompson around the perimeter for South Alabama. Adam Salos had a nice game with eight points tonight. Thompson, nice fake. Nice fake. Can he finish? Yeah. Nice Larry done. Thompson with 11. That said, he's probably the brightest star, certainly the brightest star South Alabama's had here tonight in Freedom Hall. Well, they need his offense. Other guys who can really score. Haj Turner is out there. 6'8 senior out of Charlottesville, Virginia. We've seen him get some part-time duty here for a couple of years. 
away from the ball of foul, evidently against Louisville. Let's go back and take a look at Larry Thompson, the guy that Bob's been talking about. Look at the ball fake. There's one. Watch another ball fake. You like guys who can make their own shots, and that's what Thompson can do. But you know what? The defense of Louisville has been the story tonight. They've been able to come up with a lot of loose balls. Muhammad with a nice pass forward and an easy dunk on the other end right there. Louisville getting it done with their good defense and finishing up Turner with the jam. Unable to hit the free throw. Demetrius Williams. Here comes Reese Gage for Louisville. Looking to penetrate the dish. And the little banker. Brandon Bender. The freshman, his first collegiate field goal. He averaged 18 points, 11 boards, and three blocks a game at Ballard High School here last year. As mentioned, a big-time scorer, 1,860 points in his high school career. Salo, the jumper, and a little air ball. Got a little bit of iron, maybe. And on the back door, Alhaji Muhammad. Straight ahead, that ball tipped. That's a good defensive play. Salo didn't give up, got down the floor, deflecting that ball out of bounds. Coming back for South Alabama, Iman Hunter. Marcus Ivey will get a breather. Well, the other thing, too, is when you get in this type of game, it means you're going to play a lot of players. But Bob Weltley, he only has nine, so his rotation is somewhat limited. Salo with a nice deal. Guess who the all-time leading coach at South Alabama is? One of our favorite characters in college basketball, Cliff Ellis. He won 171 games at USA from 75 to 84. And went to Clemson, ended up from Clemson, going to Auburn, where he is right now. He's got a pretty good club this year, too. O'Bannon short with it. Bender the rebound, way high off the glass. And that ball cradled by Adam Salo. Louisville foul. That'll be on number 34, Larry O'Bannon, his third. And set to check back in, Otis George. Tomorrow, ESPN and ESPN2, the triple header from Maui to Eastern. Chaminade, South Carolina. Nine Eastern, number one Duke and Seton Hall for the Big East on ESPN2. Late, late, 11.30, Jason Capono and the Bruins and the Cougars of Houston. Not to take anything away from Seton Hall and Houston, but there's a potential big bang matchup in that semifinals if Duke and UCLA get there. Big time. Yes, sir. UCLA picked in the upper echelon of the Pac-10. Interesting. They're out at USC the other night for the NIT. Nobody talking much about Arizona, but they have opened some eyes. UCLA, Stanford, Arizona. I'm sorry. UCLA, Stanford, USC, Arizona, and Cal. The top five picks in the Pac-10 preseason poll. Let me tell you what. I kind of like Jim Brown's play. I think he's going to have a good year this year. He is an unsung coach out there. He had some great years at Eastern Michigan before going out there to Berkeley. 4.20 to go. The three just rims out on Larry Thompson. I guarantee you nobody in the Pac-10 likes going to Haas Pavilion either. That's a gallagher Iba Arena type facility out there that they've expanded and a very difficult place to play on the road in the Pac-10. O'Bannon leaves and Simon Nadenov is back for Louisville. looking to throw it in for Reese Gage. As I said earlier, uh, you, you obviously like to play a lot of players in a situation like this. Rick Pitino going to his bench, utilizing every player he's got. Muhammad off to the races, which they like a lot around here, <laughs> but it's off his foot, and the turnover sends it back the other way. That wasn't six furlongs. That one simply just went off his knee. That was so fast, Larry Conley didn't have a chance to get to the window. <laughs> Four minutes to go. And we've got a little turning the ball over, palming by Demetrius Williams. Louisville bench, looking forward to a season. Maybe pretty good. This program, by the way, will go over 1,400 wins all time this year in their 88th year of basketball. Simon Nadenoff on the drive. South Alabama foul. It appears to be on Iman Hunter. That'll be his third. Louisville's all-time record, 1,387 wins, 758 losses in 87 years. And Denny Crum had 675 of them. 
nearly half. Nadenov with his third point of the night, all at the line. Young men from Sofia, Bulgaria, who then played some prep school at Berkshire in Homestead, Florida. Oh, exclamation point. Yeah, Brandon Bender, the freshman, he'll be ripping down the chandelier for years to come in this great old basketball building. That was a big time offensive rebound. I think that backboard still moving down there. A little long on the three for Demetrius Williams. But that's the thing. Three good Louisville high school players, All-Americans, multiple-time All-Staters, have all decided to stay. Bender, Hurt, and O'Bannon have all signed with Rick Pitino. 3.16 to go. Watch out, folks. Here's an exclamation point for you. NCAA basketball is brought to you by 7-Up in your local 7-Up bottle. Make 7-Up yours. The face of a freshman who just got his first college dunk, Brandon Bender. It will be one of many in his career here. Purvis Ellison, their all-time leading dunker with 162. The 25th anniversary special, the IROC special, coming up next year on ESPN2. Games, the drive, the finger roll. How sweet is that? Pretty nice move. He went right by Larry Thompson, rolled it right down the lane, and nobody came to help. 18 for Reese Gaines. 88-31. Cards, 250 to go. Back cut. Thompson, nice underneath. Pass. And a hat there as Airborne went Otis George. And it may be Nadenoff with the help getting the foul. Larry, a look at Denny Crum. His last game here, last March, Louisville had won a couple of NCAA championships. And after 675 wins, 30 years, it was a very emotional night on this floor. Indeed it was. And uh, he was thanking everybody that night. And they still love Denny Crum. I mean, for what he did for this university, a Hall of Fame coach, went in 1994. And these are the last four coaches. Bernard peck Hickman, John Dromo, Denny Crum, and now Rick Pitino. Only four in, uh, what, 57 years. Denny Crum, 675 wins. peck Hickman, 443. And no other Louisville coach, more than 68. So it's been a two-man show around here for a long time. And it's about to become number three in succession with Rick Pitino. Two and a half minutes to go. Jaguars of South Alabama. Better days ahead for them, certainly. Bob Weltnick putting together a ball club that returns not a whole lot from last year when he lost three starters. Virgil Staniskew, Ravante Dantzler, Bull Ball Conference, and Brett Gravitt, one of their good guards. Thompson kicks it, nobody there. Yeah, but one of the things you've got to take away from this, Bob, is you, you got to go away knowing, all right, we got hand, our head handed it to us in a basket. We're going to go home and work on the things that we need to work on, and that's what Bob Welley has got to take away from this game. Just forget the score and go on. They're pleased with a couple of their signings. 6'6", six, six, Houston forward, Richard Law, and Hugo Ezekwe, a 6'1 guard, also out of Houston, Texas. Switch! Nadenhoff! That three gives him a half dozen. 91-31. Look at the arc on that baby. Adam Salo into double figures with 10. Salo with 10. Thompson with 11. X, X two. Looks like the largest margin of victory at home ever may be upon us here. They're tied with it right now at 58. They beat Moorhead by that count back in 95 in early December. Jaguar ball with a minute 28 to go. This might be the biggest thrashing I can remember you and I ever working the other one. Yeah, teams have the ability to keep it close with Connolly watching normally. <laughs> and there's a three for Larry Thompson. How about him? You were right about him, Larry. You called the first half. He can do some things. He has nine of his 14 since halftime. High post Turner. Good look, Gaines. Won't go. Bender keeps it alive. 
Did he grab somebody or push off to make that happen? Evidently. And for Brandon Bender, his first foul. But a nice debut for him. He looked around <laughs> as if to say, I didn't do anything. <laughs> and look, you know, players never commit fouls. Nope. Brandon Bender. Kentucky High School Player of the Year. That's saying something in its own. Three-time All-Stater. The IROC special coming up as soon as we wrap up our hoops here. Justin White with a half dozen. And Bender will get a breather. And we'll see the sophomore Louisville kid, Mac Wilkinson, back in. Nice rotation. Justin White with seven. 91-38. Five unanswered points by the Jaguars here. Turner for Nadenoff, looking for Wilkinson posting up. Simon will drive. It was grabbed on the way in. That'll be Adam Salo. By the way, folks, don't forget again this year, we've got ESPN full court for you. Over 450 college basketball games. Watch your favorite team or conference no matter where you live. See the games you want by ordering ESPN full court today. And if you get those 450, I guarantee you, Larry Conley or Bill Raftery will be on <laughs> one out of every two. <laughs> Larry Conley will get a little look later on this week at Charlie Spoonhauer's yeah, running Rebels at UNLV. Spoonhauer. They're going to play up in Cincinnati, huh? Yeah, I'll be with the Bearcats up there next weekend in Cincinnati. See Bob Huggins can get his club put back together after that big win by Oklahoma State and still won that play. Final 30 seconds now. 92-38 Louisville. <laughs> Al-Haji Muhammad. Brings it up the floor. He's a smooth-looking kid. We've loved this hustle so far and his hard work out there. Out of 20 seconds, a handoff to Reese Gaines. Jags try to trap him. He stepped right through it nicely. Final 10 seconds. Shot clock is off. Muhammad killing some time. Dishing for Haj Turner. Air ball. And that will do it. 92-38, Louisville, Rick Pitino's debut of success. For Larry Conley, Bob Carpenter, hope you enjoyed it on ESPN2 tonight. The IROC 25th anniversary special is coming up next. For all of us from Louisville, good debut, Mr. Pitino, and so long from Freedom Hall.